Welcome. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing and component overview of Descent Legends of the Dark, published by Fantasy Flight Games. So down at the table, this is a game I was trying to uh, use self-control with and not get, but Tim at our local shop convinced me that I had to have it. So here it is, Descent Legends of the Dark. And first off, I know there's been some controversy on this game, but uh, I'm curious to play it. I'm typically not a fan of app-driven games, but I did enjoy Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. And with this beautiful artwork, figured we'd give this a shot. So this is a huge box. Of course, it does have space here at the bottom to hold all the components we're going to construct. And looking on the back, we can see this is a game that's gonna take three to four hours to play per session. So if I do some playthroughs, I don't know how I'm gonna break them down, but I'll try to figure out a way if I get into playing. For one to four players, and we can see your legend begins. The realm's oldest enemy has returned and the stage is set for the next great confrontation between Tyrannoth and the forces of darkness and descent, Legends of the Dark, the definitive dungeon crawling board game for one to four players. With a fully integrated companion app as your guide, you're invited to embark on the first part of a campaign that stretches across this enchanted land exploring dark forests and ancient battlegrounds as you confront the undead lurking behind a veil of mist, demonic barbarians stalking the wilds, and more. Throughout these trials, you will develop your skills to meet greater challenges, craft new weapons, and armor to aid you, and gain power that will stretch beyond this box into future adventures. Terranoth is in peril. Forge your own legend in Descent, Legend of the Dark. So let's go ahead and take a look inside of this massive box. So pulling off the lid. We have our learn to play guide, beautiful artwork on front and a quick reference on back, 32 pages long. So going over an overview about getting the app, uh, the components, of course, Fantasy Flight, great job laying everything out as usual in most of their games. Going over setup, so integration with the map, playing quests and different things we'll figure out while playing. Enemy activations, additional enemy rules, then the terrain, dealing with overhangs, campaign rules, and so forth. Then we have a lore guide. So going over the world, nice map on the back. So we can learn about Tyrannoth, the darknesses, our different characters we'll be playing with. Then an assembly sheet for all the terrain we'll be making. So that's gonna take a little bit of work. Hopefully it goes easier than plastic miniatures and there's no paint required. Until we actually get to the miniatures. So yeah, one mini to put together. Then a little flyer for their role-playing games in the realms of Terranoth. Then straight to our miniatures. And I guess before I start breaking into individual things, we'll see what all's in the box first. So the one miniature we have to put together. And this looks like a two tier stack with our creatures we'll be fighting. And then our heroes, like I said, I'll get a closer look at these here in a bit. Once we empty everything out of the box. Then several pieces of cardboard for us to deal with. Looks like we get a sample of GameGenic sleeves. Dice, cards. Little plastic pieces, which I think go on our miniatures, our hero cards, and some underlays it looks like. More cards to look at. And we'll take a peek underneath here, and we're at the bottom of a box, but the way this thing works, it's a box within a box. So you can pull this out, still the great artwork. And this is will, where we will store all of our train once we get that constructed. So we'll start with the overview of our punch boards. Just taking a quick look at that. 
and it's going to be the standard FFG size cardboard. And we are going to have quite a bit of terrain to punch out and put together. We'll see how all that unfolds. So that should take most of my free time just putting this stuff together. But hopefully it will be better than most miniature games that you have to cut off sprues and glue. Hopefully this is just punch out and connect the pieces. So tons of terrain, just a few tokens. So you've got some shells in there. And doors. More room tiles and tokens. And then some dials for us to put together. Some outdoor terrain with some trees. And this looks like the dragon to put together. All right, to start with, we'll go with our hero cards and underlays. So these are dual-sided, so we have Brynn with her abilities. And like I said, this is just an unboxing. I don't know what anything means at the moment. Assuming that's health, maybe some movement, attack and defense, some special abilities, fatigue, and so forth. Varix, the dragon hybrid outcast. Then we have Chance, the Herix rogue. Cyrus, the human prodigy. And Kelly, the dwarf artificer. And Galadin, the elf huntsman. And some underlays for our maps. Uh, looks like we've got some lava. And I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Probably not good. Some spiked, definitely not good, and some water. And for miniatures, we'll start with our Centurion Hybrid. So the assembly, you can kind of see this is only going to fit in there one way. And I'll bring that out, so we just press that in. And you can see that fits pretty good. And the detail on these is pretty amazing. And on the back, he's got a spot to attach his wings. I'll probably end up gluing that at some point, but no, that fits in there pretty easily. So first miniature. And taking it apart, if you want to store it back, everything just comes right on out. And for our heroes, we have Galadin. Really nice on the bow. So for miniature quality, top notch for sure. Then Kelly or Dwarf. Cyrus or Cirrus, or Human Prodigy. Then we've got Chance. And Varix. Really neat staff. And lastly, Brynn, our human Avenger. And looking at our other creatures, not sure what their names are, but we have two of these. Some type of rock beast who's falling apart intentionally. Nothing wrong with the sculpt, just the way it's meant to be. Then we have two of these. Nice action pose, that's for sure. 
I guess I should show we've got a riser and then some ID markers. And the way these ID markers work is they'll just go on the bottom of this, I guess, so they'll be color coded. And with these guys, we've got four of these. The rest of them. And also four of these. I said great detail on these, not just, I mean, got nice bases, not just flat. And for these guys that have been shot a couple times with some arrows and sword has seen some better days. So he's battle worthy. Like he's barely strong enough to carry that sword. And we have two of these happy fellas. And three wolves. Love the sculptal nose. Oops, we actually have four of those. And for these happy ladies. For these next miniatures. And lastly, for the miniatures, two of these guys. Very cool looking. And a quick look at her dice. So four of each type. We've got some D6s, 8s, and 12s. So now with the miniatures out of the way, we'll take a look at the cards. And most of the cards are double-sided. So instead of just flipping, I think it'd be easier for me just to go through, flip them over, and then go through them again. So we've got the Warden's Blade. So different types of blades. A war Hammer. The war bell, some spears, knives, nice gauntlet, our wand, staff. So different weapons, different abilities, a nice bow, looks like some upgrades and some rune blades and then flipping them over. Taking a look at the other side. And see these go with different heroes. All right, so done with the weapons. And the same thing for our armor, double-sided, a little bit different on each side. So we've got some dust plate, plate of the bloodstone, more plates, sky keepers, some mail, some leather, some noble attire, a nice cape, and cloak of sorrow. Then looking at the other sides, back to a robe and noble attire, stalwart mail. Plate and dust plate. Then we have some trinket cards, once again, double-sided. So some bracers, a basket, horn of courage, more bracers, dead man's compass, war rune, and the wanderer's stone, the mana weave, the undying skull, some shadow bracers and our bloodthirsty bracers. Then moving on to consumables. Bigger stack here, some mud potion. Trying to get 
good way to go through these a little bit quicker. Some smoke bombs, mage dust, some focus potions, grenades, more potions, grenades, rabbit foot potion, and slayer in the back side. More rabbit foot, some vigor. Back to our grenades, antidotes, fire grenades, the warrior's breath, mage dust, rogue sweat, some crimson. All right, so consumables. Then we have a stack of skill cards, double-sided again, and going with a certain hero. So some reprieve, inspiring fighter, passing illness, disguise, out of the shadows, cold snap, some sap, quick draw, I got this. And then on the other side, risky design, word of caution, some outflank, treat darkness, wings of wind, hand of fortune, some fire breath, fate's embrace. And a battle cry. Then we can move on to some injury cards. Once again, double-sided. Cautious, slow, tired, frustrated, frantic, hesitant, hardened skin, heavy heart, heavy hands, cauterization. Then on the back side, some molten blood, overwhelmed, hobbled, and scared. And four reference cards going over hero conditions, enemy statuses, and the hero turn and dice results. And now the so-called fun parts. So I've punched out all the just tokens. So now we're going to start with something easy, just a cauldron maybe. So we'll punch these three pieces out. Like I said, I'm starting off with easy. So supposedly just slide two pieces together and put the top on to make our stew. So sliding those in. And placing this on top. And we've completed our first piece of terrain. Of many. Then I think we'll move up to the lectern. So just sliding these on top. And the flames coming through. And we've got a book on top. And there's that finished. Had to get a little forceful with it. And then some archways. So these should be fairly easy, I hope, to slide in. And there's two of these to put together. There we go. And three large tables. And the way these work is put those together like that, trying to make an X, then we're going to try to slide the top part of the table in on it. All right, now we'll go for the small table since we have the large ones completed. And these are very simply Put one on top of the other and 
Put her tabletop in there. Three little tables. All right, moving on to short and large columns. So it looks like we've got four of these and eight of the short ones. So columns, very simple. Just put them together like so. And these are gonna hold up our larger boards eventually. So the four large ones. And then the short ones work in the same way. And the rest of those. And let's get into the health doll assembly business. We're gonna need her back front. And one of these little things, pull that apart. Try to press this through the center. And put that on top. And once you get that on there, go ahead and finish it off. All right, so we've got all four of those done. And moving on to chess. So this looks interesting and a bit scary. Hopefully the chests aren't going to be booby trapped. So sliding these in and bending this over to get it to connect in on the other side. All right, not a perfect fit on the edge, but interesting nonetheless. All right, nice four chests done. All right, doorways and gates. So first with the gates, you gotta punch all these holes out. And with that punched out, put those in there so our gates and doors will stand up. And our doors, nothing to punch out in the center. Just putting them together like so. There we got that in. Some nice heavy duty doors. All right, let's move on to some stone steps. So we've got two side pieces, top, bottom, and middle steps. So we start by putting the top step on, hopefully. And then we slide this in. and pop it down on those pegs. And the same thing with the first step. Sliding in and popping down. All right, there we go. We've made some nice stone steps. All right, looking good on that. Moving on to trees. So three pieces, just like the column, slide one on top of the other. Then like your little tables. Slide that in and we just made a tree. And now the book shelving business looks a bit fun. All right, I think we're gonna grab our end shelf and then start putting these in. Then slide that in the center piece if I can. I feel like that's gonna be easier those two pieces not there as the rest of it falls apart on me. Trying to get 
those two slots lined up. There we go. And I'll slide those, oops, let everything fall apart on me. All right, bookshelf. So far, our first problem. Should be good at this. Turn on my games are on. And we'll try to add the other end piece. All right, and then throw the back in there. All right, we've got a bookshelf. All right, four bookshelves. Back to something easy. Couple barricades need to be made. So two pieces, just like your columns. Slide them together, and we're barricaded. Now we're going to attempt to put the well together. So it looks like we've got these on the bottom, connecting with that. And that slides down in the center piece. And then that slides down on that. Then we have two of these pieces. Going down on the ends. And we have the roof to the well. All right. So now we can go get our water. Hopefully it's not dry. And now the only thing left is the dragon head. The one I've been avoiding. So first we need to put the head together. Then claws, put his body, and then attach everything, and hope it comes out looking like that. All right, to the easy part it looks like. Sliding that in. And then off to the sides. Looks like this is going on this one. And this piece. Slides in on that side. And I think the two goes up top. And this goes behind it. And the bottom part of the jaws come in. And hopefully soon we've got a dragon head at least. With an overbite or underbite. Okay, there's a problem. It's not in all the way. All right, that's a little better, I think. All right, now on to the claws. Slipping those in. And his other one. Okay. 
And working on the dragon body. That's gonna hold it. And arms. And popping in some backbone. And see if we can get his head put on. Get his hands and claws. And give you a nice Good hug. And then the wings. And that is everything put together. So the rest of the stuff I have is just floors. And now, to see if it fits all back in the box. And now the game within the game, putting it back in the box. So I think that guy's gotta go in first. And we'll take our stairs. And throw in those open spaces. Maybe our towers can go in between them, almost. Bunch of bookshelves. And then I think we just bury. Put all the columns in. You know, before I do that, I'm gonna keep this miniature together and see if I can throw him in here also. So just tossing everything in there. We can get her dice. And other baggies also. Don't know if I have room for the cards. I'm gonna put those in deck boxes. So I think that's it for there. Then we'll put this back in. Our player boards and those. Since I'm putting the miniature in the bottom, I don't know if I'm gonna keep that. Probably gonna pitch it. Put the rest of the minis in here. Of course, with that other piece gone, got some room on the side for that. Throw the rest of our tiles, rules, and we're all packed in. So that is everything in the sense Legends of the Dark. As always, hope you enjoyed this unboxing. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.